Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really pretty flower bouquet gift box. The idea for this one came from one that I saw in the florist in their window. It was much bigger, but it gave me the idea to try and use that concept of flowers on the top but make a gift box. It's quite fashionable at the moment to have these kind of hat box styles with all the rose heads kind of sticking out the top like this. Now my friend Tatty last week or a couple of weeks ago, she sent me these lovely foam Iranian flowers, which I shared last week and I thought I want to make something that just shows those off and I think this has worked out quite well. So this piece here just slides off and in here you have your gift box and uh, this measures five by four and it's a really good size. It will fit a candle in this perfectly but of course you can obviously pop anything you like in there and it's got a really nice closure slides on really well you can see there and I like that you have a little bit of it peeking out the bottom there finished it off with this beautiful big bow and I like the little handle there as well so it is very straightforward to make it's kind of it's normal gift box but it's actually upside down which that will make sense in a moment okay so I have used the happy you papers this is the new Dovecraft collection I know lots of you are receiving yours now or you are ordering it so it's gorgeous and I've used here this is that lovely glittery stripe and then for today's one I am using this marble um, pattern here which I will show you and that's here really really nice quite subtle but I thought it would work well with this project so yeah all the links for this will be shared below and the cardstock that I'm using is this here this is the Dovecraft premium textured cardstock Again, some of you have said that you've got this and you really like it. It's um, the first time I've started using this particular one and so far it's, yeah, it's nice. It's 220 GSM and you get 80 sheets, four sheets of 20 colours. Again, all the links will be in my blog. So Tatty sent me loads of these beautiful flowers. I don't have any more of the cream left. I used all them in this one, but I've got, you know, quite a few. I've got about six left now of these ones. And these measure, they're about between one and a quarter and one and a half depending on how full they are but you will need 16 once I show you how we put all the flowers on you may need more or less depending on the size of the flower that you're using and then I've got some ribbons here which I um, I'm not sure what color I'm going to use yet I might go for this darker kind of deep I'm not sure what color they have got it down there but it's like a wine color it's really nice okay so I've already prepared because you need two of each side so they're the ones I've prepared for the lid and the base and then these are the ones I'll go through the scoring with you, would we'll go through that separately. Okay, so with this one here, I use inches and centimetres. Now the reason for that is because to make the box that actually goes inside, using the centimetres works better, but I'm going to talk you through both. So I have this plate here which has centimetres on it and it can sit over the top of my scoreboard which has the inches on it. This is stamping up, lots of you asked me for, you know, about this uh, weekly, but I recently, well, say recently, a few months ago, I picked up the plate here for the centimetres and um, it does come in handy. So again, I'll share links for that one for you. So to start off with, for the outer I guess the actual bouquet box you need two pieces that are eight and a half by eight and along the eight and a half inch side you want to score at four and eight and then rotate and score at four okay so this is for our lid and then you want to fold and burnish all of the score lines okay and then we need to do a little bit of cutting so I've got my half inch tab here on the right hand side. I'm going to cut up that middle four inch score line up to the middle. Okay, and I'm just going to cut away the bulk from the score line. This is all going to be covered with flowers, so don't worry, you know, you don't have to do that, but I'm kind of in habit of doing it now all the time. And then you want to cut down the other score line here, again up to the first score line, and then just cut that. Just cutting it on an angle there just to create a little tab. Okay. So you want to do that twice. You'll have two pieces and there's my other one. So I've got those now all ready to form our lid. While I've got the scoreboard out, I'll go through the, the base here. Okay. So if you're working in inches, you want a piece, you want two pieces of cardstock that are eight and a quarter by nine. And what you're going to do, because this has to slide inside this, which is four by four, this lid, we need to start working in sixteenths of an inch. Now this is why centimetres work better for this. So just below 
here's the four inch marker. Just below that you've got the next marker down, which is three and seven eighths. In between that, I've got this piece here that sticks out. That is where I want to score. Now that would actually be three and 15 sixteenths of an inch. So it can be quite confusing for people. And obviously our scoreboards don't work in sixteenths of an inch. So what you would do is put your little stylus and put a little wedge there, and then you could move it out so it lines up with the four inches and score. And then push it back in again and score at seven and seven eighths of an inch, all the way down. Rotate the cardstock, and again, you want to put a little marker in between the three and seven eighths and the four. Move it out so that marker now lines up with the four inches and score. Or pop it back into its place there with the eight and a quarter inch side. And with a piece of folded cardstock, pop that cardstock in there first, line it up, and score at four. And then take it away, push it back in again, and score at seven and seven eighths. Rotate, pop the cardstock in, and score at four, and that's all the scoring done. So that's working in inches, and that's the two ways to do it, because we basically need to just take a little bit off in order for it to slide inside that lid. Now, if you want to work in centimeters, it's really, really easy. So if I just pop this plate in, and again, line it along here. So now this piece is 21 by 23 centimeters. Along the 21 centimeter side, you just want to score at 10 and 20 because the 10 actually lines up perfectly between the three and seven eighths and the four inches. So this is when centimeters and inches can work really well together because the centimeter, that 10 centimeters is slightly smaller than the four inches, but it's just the right amount that we need to make that base fit into the lid there. And then you want to rotate the cardstock and score again at 10. Okay, so if you do have a scoreboard in centimetres and a scoreboard in inches, I would say go for the centimetres for the base. And like I said, you want a piece that's 21 by 23 and just score at 10 and 20 and then score again at 10. Really easy. Otherwise, do the other way there with the piece of cardstock. So again, you want that, you want to do that twice. And again, so that's everything now scores. You just want to fold and burnish like so. And again, we're just going to do a little bit of cutting. So I've got my tab here again on the right hand side. You should have the larger rectangles at the top here and these smaller equal sided squares along the bottom because that's going to form the base. And again, you just want to cut up. I'm going to remove the bulk there from the score line. And then this one here, again, you just want to cut up to the first score line. So you're cutting it exactly the same way as you did the lid. Take a little wedge off there and again off there. And again, you'll do that twice, so there's my two pieces. So now we need to start sticking things together. So first of all, I'm going to stick the base down. Okay, and all you want to do is pop some glue. You can use double-sided tape if you want, but I'm just going to run some glue along my tab. And this is the base that we're working on, so the last one I've scored, okay? And you just want to stick that one over that one. And just make sure that your base score line here lines up. You can see there they all line up with each other. To burnish those ones, like so. I'm just going to spread all that out. Turn the whole thing over. Fold this half in, and again, you want to add some glue along here. And then this one now you can just fold right over and it should all line up nicely, like so. And then turn it upside down and this is now your base. So it doesn't really matter which one you want to stick in, but I'm just going to add a little glue in that one just to tack it down. And again with that one, this is just tacking it down. Actually I'm going to stick that one down. And then this last one here. I'm just going to put a bit more glue on just to make sure that that all sticks down. Turn it over and just with a ruler you can just go in the bottom there and just spread all that glue out. Okay, so that's our base already. So pop that to one side and next we're going to do our lid. So we're going to stick it together exactly the same way. So again, I've got my tab here, so I'm just going to run some glue. 
like so. And you're going to stick this over the top. And then you're going to stick that one to the other side exactly the same way as we just done the base. And again, stick all this down exactly the same way as before. And it doesn't matter how this looks because this is the piece now that we're going to cover with our flowers. So what I would say before you go and stick it all down is make sure, grab your base, that this all sits perfectly and it should, like it does, slide on and you want a really nice, it's almost like a suction. I always say you can feel the air kind of being pushed out and that will give you a really nice finish. So I'm really pleased with that and now go ahead and decorate it because the last thing you want to do is obviously pop, you know, do all your flowers and then go to put your lid on and it not quite works. So, but I'm really pleased with that, that, that works really well. Okay, so I've got my hot glue heating up. I just find that works really well when you're sticking flowers down and when you've got something, you know, a lot of kind of real 3D pieces, the, the hot glue is just brilliant. So what I want to create first is just a little kind of pull tab. I found it easier to stick this down first and then put all the flowers around it. So we're going to create this here. Again, it's completely optional. You don't have to. It's very easy to lift the lid off if you, you know, would rather not do it. What I'm going to do is just do it and then you can see what you've got to do and it's up to you then how long you want it to be. I just want the knocks. That's the bit now that I'm going to glue inside like so. Okay, and then you've just got, so I'm going to glue that down in the centre there. Okay, so I've just popped a blob there and I'm just going to hold that down for the moment. Okay, so you can see what I've got there. I've got my little loop kind of coming together. And now I'm just going to start sticking my flowers down. So I want to pop them as close to the edge as I can get them. I'm going to do all my corners first and then work my way in. That way I know I get them all kind of equally spaced. Although it's quite e pretty easy for me to do these ones because these are um, four on each row, so I know, you know, how many I need. And you just want to start building it all up. It's really quite fun. I love doing this kind of thing. So just a bit of hot glue on the bottom of each one. And the, I'd say the key with this is you want to pack them in. You'll see there just how many I've got in there. You don't want to be able to see any of the lid. You can't see where that ribbon was joined. And once we stick our decorative paper on the outside, you won't see anything. So don't worry if you've got glue showing, all that kind of stuff, you don't see any of it. And that is the look of this, you know, particular kind of style, I guess. It's, it's to, you know, they're meant to be hidden. Okay, so that's all finished now, so my roses are all stuck down. Next we need to decorate it and that kind of finishes it off. So you want two pieces that are four and a half by nine inches. And you can see really closely there that lovely marble effect. Now with these ones, we're just going to be wrapping rather than scoring. I think it actually gives a much nicer look. Now you want to make sure that the bottom lines up with the bottom here and you're going to have an inch over, or no, half an inch, sorry, overhanging. And that is what conceals, I'll bring it up here, by that sticking up, it conceals the bottoms of the roses and any kind of mess you might have. Okay, and what's going to happen, we're going to stick this down, starting with the edge to one of the edges here, and then just literally wrap it around. But what you want to do to start it off is, I'm going to use my wet glue for some of it, but hot glue to stick it to these bits here. But because the last piece we have is actually going to tuck in under this just so we get a nice finish, you don't want to stick glue to this very edge here. You want to kind of start, I'd say, about, a cent about an inch in. Okay, so I'm just going to go like that because this is going to wrap round once you see what I'm doing. And then with my hot glue, I'm going to add a dollop of hot glue onto the side of each of the roses. And that's purely for this to stick on. So I'm just going to sit that down, like so. Let all that sit there, and then the, the hot glue is just attaching. I can feel it underneath the heat there to the sides of those roses. But this side here isn't stuck down, just a, that one inch kind of piece, so that when we get it back around, we can slide our cards or you know pattern paper under there just to get a nice finish. So I'm just going to make sure that's all stuck there and then continue wrapping around and what you can do now is just that was just kind of starting it off but you can just add your glue onto the actual box and then again I'm just going to add a little blob of hot glue and you just want to carefully roll it around 
and I just thought by wrapping it you get a bit more of a nicer finish. So, and then this one here we can stick down completely and then you want to grab your next piece and then this one we're going to start right on the edge of this one. And then this last piece here, you can actually probably trim it. You don't need the full inch. I'm going to cut it in half and it's going to stick underneath here. Okay, so just fold that one in slightly there. I'm just going to open this up. It's a little bit fiddly, but I just think it gives you a nicer finish. Pop a little bit of hot glue just to kind of tack it onto there. So stick that one down first. And then I can just finish that off with some glue on top of there. And there you have that piece. I think it looks really nice. I love the finish on this. So next, I'm going to pop it on my base. Like so. So you can see now how that's all coming together. And now I'm just going to finish it off with my ribbon. So what I like to do is actually stick the wrap on separately choose what one you want to be the kind of front. I'm going to have this as my front here so I'm going to stick my ribbon around like so. So I'm just going to trim that off and what I actually done is I pinched the ribbon underneath. I kind of screwed it up like so so that when we stick the bow on top it looks like it was all one thing whereas if you have it left like that and you stick the bow on top you'll just see it. Again that's me being a bit picky you don't have to do that but I like to show you little ways just to kind of really finish it off so you just want to make sure that you get your blob of glue in the centre unless you want to have your bow lower down which you may well do and I'm just going to like I said I've just scrunched it up and I'm just going to stick it on that glue dot. Okay don't worry if it's not you know completely stuck down you just really want that look of it being kind of pulled in and then you can just wrap it all the way around and again I'm just going to squeeze in the other bit there. Okay and now that's ready for me to stick my bow so I'm just going to again I'm not going to cut it yet until I've done my bow. Lots of you ask and I will get around to doing a, a tutorial. I've got quite a few ways I do bows but the most the quickest one I do is I just hold it in my hand like so, bring up the two loops and then just loop them like so and that way I have kind of the control to be able to make sure I have all the right sides kind of facing the way I want them to you can just kind of play around before I pull it into a, a really tight knot like so and then I can kind of adjust it accordingly to how big you want your bow to be but sometimes I use the bow maker, little device that I've got. Sometimes I use my fingers, sometimes I use a fork. It just depends on the size that I want. But the idea now is when that sits on that knot, you can't see the ribbon behind, so it looks like it was all made out of one, you know, big piece. So I think that is the right size that I want. I'm just going to trim this off here, and then I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue there, not much. And just stick that one over the top. So there you go guys. I really really like how this has turned out. I love the colours. love that marble paper. Um, I think the gift box has got a great size to it and um, yeah it's got lots of room there for lots of goodies and I love how it's got a real nice kind of snug closure. So yeah let me know what you think. I love these papers, love the stripey there, that glitter, it's just gorgeous. I think these would look lovely for a special birthday obviously as a gift but also as favours. These you know maybe for a hen party, um, just yeah love them and obviously you can you know reduce the size as well but I do like that size, I think it's quite a handy one especially if you are someone that likes to give people candles, I think they're going to fit really nice into those so yeah let me know what you think. Thank you Tatty for the flowers, um, yeah they've been uh, put to good use. So until next time, if you've enjoyed today's tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.